all right so it's a complete mess in here but that's because i had to go through like okay so let me start from the beginning oh actually this is going to be the start of a new vlog so hi hello welcome to my channel my name is destiny hope owner of destiny hope candles where i sell candles make candles and i sell candle recipes and ebooks and candle business guys and things of that nature so if you are needing any supplies or anything of that nature it's going to be down in the description as well as my ebooks and things of that nature which i'm going to be going hard with and doing some video format of those recipes and whatnot and putting up on the channel or putting them on a patreon or something i'm not exactly sure yet but i do want to bring those to life and envision them so before you buy the book or whatever or while you're buying the book you can also get a video and some pictures involved as well to see how i did all that testing and whatnot so those links are going to be in the description and if you need any supplies i have affiliate links to where i do earn a small commission off of your purchase for no extra cost to you that is down in the description as well and just go to my camera shop I candles so and currently I use the formula for these jars right here because I had a really really hard time as you can see with these jars right here which these are my I love these jars so much but they gave me so much problems to where I was like I don't even know if I could start a candle business because these jars are just so hard to wick but I am going to be transferring my wax from my paraffin wax to a to IGI 6006 so when I get that in, I'm going to be getting that from, I guess, the flaming candle because I don't want to have supplier issues and that can cause growth issues in the future whenever I need supplies, whenever there's holidays, marketing events, not my, well, pop-up shops and stuff like that. I don't want there to be an issue with suppliers because a lot of my jars and all the other stuff and my wax came from my supplier i don't want those issues plus i love these jars so much but i never actually use it for mine because i want to use a full pair from wax but i'm actually going to have to go to one of um, the recipes that i have currently so i'm going to get that and test it out again for my fragrances so i can transfer all of that over and i can go back to these jars because i love these jars so much this vlog is going to be the start of that whenever I get those supplies and I, I can't get them right now but I'm getting those supplies a little later and all of my older supplies whatever didn't sell last year I'm going to sell this year which I already sold some of my wicks which are those LX 16 LX 24 wicks that I was using for my old formula with this wax or whatever that uh, candle scientists have recommended and which I don't know if it's their wax every all of what they got I'm gonna be honest just bad other than the fragrance oils and maybe the vessels even though it's very expensive that's the only thing that i pretty much only trust or, or buy from them anything else is a no-go because like their their quality of their wicks maybe it's the wick coating i don't know it's just it's just not good i don't like it i don't appreciate it and i'm not spending all that money for stuff that does not work to be honest because a lot of people use lx wicks but have no problems i have problems constantly so i'm not doing that and i'm not going to get my 6006 wax from that either even though i prefer to get everything from one supplier or in one bulk order so i don't have to pay shipping tech and taxes for different people or whatever it's probably a bit more expensive even though it's probably not but regardless i see a lot of like you know that could have been because of the whole covid thing so supply chain issues kind of changed the formula a bit but with theirs a lot more people complain about their formula changing and sometimes they don't have they don't get hot through or, or they get more sinkholes or whatever because the formula doesn't seem the same so um, i'm not gonna get it from them but so what i am gonna be doing in this vlog is going to be doing that later and i'm also going to be just simply using some of my older candles that i made while using the flame and candle uh fragrance oils what i'm going to be doing now i'm going to be doing some product photography i already have some product photos made but they're like used like with the um like on Photoshop, I want to take some, like how I see Mimi Rock's Candle Code is so like beautiful, like I, but I want something like a stone type of feel. I really like stone or concrete, like the pores, you see like a porous background. I really want something like that with some type of cloth or something. And I've always wanted like a, um, a landscape because I need one really bad for my um, website banner page, not banner page, but like my banner photo. But I haven't had one because a lot of my backgrounds aren't long enough. I got these backgrounds from Dollar Tree. And I put them on a poster board, which is not even long enough anyway. But I gotta get some more because I wanna be able to do a like a standalone version, like a portrait for videos and photos or whatever. And I also wanna be able to do a landscape. So I need at least two of these and maybe even to put some more up here. So I at least need a four by four or 
a one by two, what, whatever, I don't know, or two by two, I don't know what it's called. But, so I'm gonna need some more on this side, and then I can put another uh, peel and stick over here so I can have something long enough for a landscape photo. But that isn't going to be my main photo. I want something like glamorous and gorgeous for my, honestly, my Instagram too, but this is for my Instagram, but this is more for like, like, reels and stuff of me pouring candles because this i can easily clean wax off it doesn't dirty anything up i would love you know that continuous background like that glamorous background and banner for my website to translate over to my instagram page because i love the minimal look i really do but it's kind of hard to translate that because i'm new to this so i'm trying to find backgrounds and and stuff like that and just what i'm interested in how i want my photos to come out what look i'm going for because i still i've been looking around trying to change up my logo and i still doesn't i still don't feel like it's professional enough so i gotta get people someone to make that for me i want to change my uh, website to a shopify website because i just feel like they care about their brands and their people more and market you and have pop-up shops and it is honestly better for the seo i just do i do think wix is easier to use but it's not the best website to get sales on because you have to do everything yourself for shopify i think it kind of does it for you i think it it has that e-commerce marketing thing and just built in and they have a lot of apps and stuff for marketing and stuff like that so i think that's going to be really good for that but they kind of are expensive they only give a three-day trial but i've seen some things that i'm interested in uh that kind of fit what i'm going for that natural neutral minimalist tone so in this video i'm going to be trying to just get some uh photoshop uh, take some photos for these candles but i'm going to these are just gonna be mock candles so i'm going to just like kind of because i really don't feel like digging this wick up so probably just or even because i want to double wick them right because that's the formula i plan on using so just probably poke some holes in here put some trim wicks in there so i don't have to waste any wicks and then just kind of poke this down so i can hide it ones that are the larger size even though i don't want to do too much right now it's basically even not the formula I don't want to do too much right now and introduce both of them. I rather just introduce a smaller one because these will be uh, sold as a, at a lesser price. You know, just kind of simplify everything. Even though it's the same formula, so it really shouldn't be anything different. But different labels, so I do have to include that cost. Everything else will be pretty much the same cost. Um, except for I have to get a separate batch of jars because it's a diff different type of inventory. And a separate size of labels, which is a different type of inventory. So I might as well... Either just choose one jar. I think I'm just gonna go with this one. This is the most simple one. This is also the one that I have, even though it shouldn't be the same testing wise for both. Regardless, these are the ones I got, and it'd just be safer to just start with the smaller one that I clearly have a bunch of. So I just cut that all the way down there. I'm heat gun over it, and I'm also gonna poke some holes in it to double wick it. Just trim those wicks down. I'm gonna heat gun them before I do that, since I'm gonna use this to poke a hole in it. And obviously, the wicks aren't the size of this, so like a full circle. And I'm going to be using these LX sample wicks that I got. Um, I have one that's already cut, but I only have like two. I don't only have one of those, so I'm gonna have to use one of these. And these wicks, I don't use them, so it's not gonna be a waste. I want to sell all of my sample wicks that I know I'm gonna be using. But I feel like it's kind of hard to sell those, especially if you don't have like a lot. I do have a decent amount, but I do have a lot that were trimmed because with these, I think you only got like five of them, I think. But yeah, so I'm going to use these because these are very sturdy. HTP is a different color, so I don't want to use those. And they also are like very soft and I could possibly use them in the future, but they're too soft for me. And they drown out because they curl over into the wax. So I don't like that, but I'm going to end up using these because these are like pure white coated which is probably why they burn so hot and burn so terrible. But cause when, I, when I saw those LX24 wigs that I haven't seen in a long time, I looked, I'm like, why does it look like, it was, it was so like thick layer with that wax. It looked it so weird.
these tins that I bought are gonna be included in things that I sell this year. Cause I was thinking about just buying them off, but I was like, you know what? I can make some money from them. Why not do that? And realistically, I still get to write them off as I sell them and I actually make physical money from it. So I'm gonna sell these because they are cute, but these are too red for my lid. Like you can see like how brown this is, which is why a lot of my stuff is like, and my brand is brown and this is more like a red bronze that I thought it was but it's really not and also because I thought about selling these I didn't know they were going to be this small so I'm like and these cost me about three dollars two to three dollars to make so I'm like one I would have to sell it for about eight maybe ten dollars and realistically for something this small it doesn't really make sense to me even though realistically is how much it costs for me to make it so I have to do that to make profit but it don't really make sense and it could be cool as a sample but two to three dollars for a sample is too expensive for a sample, especially with the wax that I use is really expensive. So it's sixty dollars per ten pounds. It's too expensive to be doing like these. So I'm just going to sell them, in which I have forty five of them. I'm going to. I have to weigh the package. I don't have any tape right now. But even though y'all remember in my last vlog, which I'll link up there, it came in a really small box. And when I tried to put it in a small box, it didn't work. So I have to put it in a box like this. And I don't have any tape. They want to just end up putting like a roll sticker on top just to kind of keep it closed. And I put some packet peanuts in there. And I finally got to use my Rolo for like the second time uh, printing the shipping label for that order for those Alex Wicks that I shipped out today. Because when I get an order, I like to go ahead and get it out, especially with a D stash, because they be thinking people be scammers and stuff. So when you give me the money, go ahead and pay for it, which I send a square invoice. I go ahead and send, send your invoice once you give me your information. And I ship it out the same day if I can get to it. I didn't have any tape, so I may do what I had. And I eventually ended up getting, getting it out. And yeah, so I'm gonna put that on the list to sell. Whatever did it sell last year with their worth of supplies and stuff and in inventory, I'm gonna sell this year. Because also one thing is too, I didn't really make any sales with my candles because I need to market a little more. And I honestly do think people did prefer these jars because I did get a lot more attention with these jars. And when I changed them, I noticed that attention did drop. So I do think I would have got more sales if it was pertaining to these jars. People were waiting for these jars. I do think uh, that is the case. But I didn't really get any sales. But well, by the time I found a formula, it was kind of late in the future. It was kind of late in the year anyway. So I'm not gonna. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give myself a little grace on that. Um, but I'm gonna. I got all year to market, and I'm gonna be putting these jars out. Uh, it's just crazy. I finally found a formula that works, and it's like now I'm going back to the same jar that gave me problems. I'm gonna do that too because with the IRS, it's like you have to make a certain amount of money per year. And I'm going to use those supplies and whatever money I make from ebook sales to. You know, you have to prove that you're making money. And if you don't, they're going to say that. Or if you don't top what you made last year, if you don't make a certain amount within like two years or whatever, they're going to consider you a hobby and like disestablish your business. So I was like, you know, whatever doesn't sell there, I'm going to make me a little money here. And whatever I can split into the next year, I'm going to do that. So I automatically have a little income in the beginning of the year. And I got the whole year to do that. So they don't, you know, see me as a just a continuous loss and whatnot, not making any money and stuff like that. So I'm gonna use that for that, just in case candle sales are slow because it is a more expensive product. Okay, so I found this site called Raw Pixel. I'm gonna put the link down in the description because I need at least like nine other referrals and I can get like a yearly subscription or something like that. So yeah, so they have like free uh, images for background photos, for um, product photos and stuff like that. And they have like PNGs and it's also compatible with Photoshop. Not sponsored, it sounds like it, but no. Um, I wish, hey, we, we open to, you know, we welcome sponsorships. It's called Raw Pixel, the link will be down in the description, my referral code, um, which is a referral link. And they have like free, but it's also kind of paid for. So they, before you can download it, you can edit it still and download it. But if you want to just download the photo and get the licensing for it, um, you have to pay like a $9 subscription each month. So I'm going to do that for the one time. And I'm going to get my photos, I'm going to download my photos. And then I'm going to have my person who has made my photos in the past on Fiverr. I'm going to have them just make the uh, the jars and the candles and replicate them into there. The only thing I don't like about it is that it doesn't really look natural. So I would, I want to honestly do the photography myself 
so it comes out natural but all, not only thing is like the lighting and trying to get the background and stuff it can be annoying and i already do have a person who can just photoshop it in there for me but they look so unrealistic and they look so shiny and glossy that's my only pet peeve about that but that's the cheapest and easiest way to do it i'm gonna be honest i was thinking about doing these jars and then the 16 ounce jar but then i was like you know what because I'm, I'm thinking about the labeling situation for it, right? So, you know what? I'm like, see, these are cheap. You know, the, the whole supply issue, but at least we will be changing our wax. So, we won't have two supply chain issues. And say, you know, God forbid, when these are out of stock or something, I still have these, you know, my second jars, which are the 16 ounce jars, like the ones that are taller than these. When I have always been wanting to do a single wick and a double wick jar and do like that. I was talking about that like plenty of times in the past in my vlogs before. And I was thinking, like, you know what? Since the jars are kind of similar, right? So obviously they're the same, you know, type of jar, right? But since the next jar size will be like four inches, and this is like 3.75, give or take. So it will be double the same with a little bit more height on this one. And this will be single weight, this will be double weight, so it makes perfect sense. Now, I still could do it like this way and the next one, but I was like, why not just make it easy on myself and have one that I can definitely sell for cheaper because this is a cheaper jar and it's a single wick counter, so I can have something that's like moderately priced and then I can have the next size up. But I didn't, I didn't just want the next size up and have a $24, $26 counter on my site. I want to have something that can be a little cheaper. And I've been debating, I've been going back and forth for $18, $20 for this counter for a while. And I really want it to be like 18 or 15 at some point if I can, especially when I get a storefront and stuff like that. And I don't have, you know, supply chain to ship stuff off. But right now, my candles, especially in my cost of labor, or mainly like my uh, what candle wax, is expensive. So it kind of has to be around that price. And I went on $20 because of how expensive the wax is, to be honest. I don't want it to be $20, but I think for me to make a decent amount of profit, that's kind of where the bar has to be set in order for me to actually make profit from that. Now, these candles cost me like $8, $9 to me to make. So I'm, I'm making some kind of profit, but not a lot, but it'll be something. But using that uh, $6.06 .06 wax that I won't have supply chain issue with, and it'll be much cheaper to cost and produce these candles than I can do sales for $15 or have it at $15 and do sales for $12.50 or have a price at $12.50. Like, I would love to do that. So, but where I get like my stuff from right now, it just doesn't have any good prices on it, nor good bulk savings or anything like that, nor free shipping. So that's just annoying. So I was thinking about that. That just came to mind. Uh, do I really want to use these jars? I don't know because I've been so stuck on these, but at least I get to use the next size up. Like still have these jars and have this one. And even with changing 6006, I should be able to at least still wick this jar because it's a single wick jar. And that's another reason why it would be good for me to keep this jar because I don't have to be tussling with a two wick jar. Because I've tussled with these for about I mean, like two, three years before I just settled upon this jar and found this one, right? So I'm like, I don't want to limit my options and only have you know, this size jar, the next size up. This kind of smells so good. This size jar, the next size up, and both of them be double wick because I feel like I've had so much trouble trying to double with these jars with the wax that I was using. Even I have a recipe for all other waxes. The wax that I was just so hard on trying to get to work, just it just didn't. It, it wasn't in my favor for that. So it just kind of is like in my mind that like these jars have kind of like burnt me in the past. So it's like. I don't want that to be my only thing of like trying to double with these jars and still the only double with versions where they gave me so many problems and like one day they could randomly not burn correctly or burn properly with the two wick jar I gotta start all over again with the recipe. I don't know, not to be it, but it's just that's just a thought in my head. So I'm like, you know what? Use this one and the next side though, because they're generally generally around the same size, which was another thing too. This is like a smaller jar, it's thinner or taller. And that would be kind of weird. Even though these wouldn't go together anyway because this is a 10 ounce and 9 ounce. This doesn't make sense. It makes sense on the fact that it's double wick and single wick. I have to charge more for double wick candle. And also these just cost more to make anyway because the jars are more expensive than those, right? And it's two wicks and these so you double the supply from that. Um, other than that, these would also just fit with those because it'll be damn near around the same height. 
black double wig and a little bit wider. So honestly, they do kind of fit together. And that's why I was so stuck on this one and the next size up because it's the exact same jar and jar type. It's just a little bit taller, so it's cute. But realistically, either you buy this or you buy the other one. You don't really, I don't really need two sizes of the other one. I don't know. I just was kind of going back and forth on it. I really want to use these jars and incorporate these jars. But it just wasn't sitting right with me trying to sell both sizes and stuff like that. And also introducing and marketing these jars so much to where when I, you know, offer these, I take it off the site. I don't want to get people familiar with these jars and take them off the site and that be part of my brand and not change my brand that they know. So I don't do that. And then I got to make those product photos. I be planning on getting a Shopify site, buy the theme, and thing the site and things of that nature. And when I do that, it's kind of upon this video. The next step, or actually the first step before my website, because I don't need to get that and spend the money that I don't have everything that I need. Really, within like the free trial, like a dollar period, because it used to be like a free trial. I don't think it is. It's a free trial for three months. No, it's a true, it's a free trial for three days, and it's a dollar uh, for three months. They didn't do special on that, right? So when that comes into play, I want to have everything that I need, so I can go ahead and have my background photos, my product photos, and I was like. You know, when I get there, there's already a lot of money, right, and testing. So when I get there, which jars am I using? Am I going to have these or going to have those? Because I have labels for this already. I have wicks for this already. Type thing. Now I have to start from scratch with different supplies um, and stuff like that. So I'm like, am I going to include these jars with these in the next size? Am I just going to do these and these? Am I just going to do these in the next size? And I was like, you know what? I can't still put these there. But have the next size up and just go ahead and have them edit that photo for me and regardless of whether I introduce that size now or not I'll at least go ahead and have the photos and or I go ahead and just have them make the cover art uh, banner for my website just for these and then when I do introduce them I can get them to make one then I can just have a slideshow so there's no wasting of anything I just have a slideshow because I'm still selling these these jars right here so It'll just be like the first photo I took of them, then the next photo introducing, uh, like it's just having these jars with the next size of the 16 ounces on pedestals. And then the next one, like the third slide, can be all of the sizes that I offer, including wax melts, or have a fourth photo of wax melts and have a slideshow going on. So that's no wasted photos. And go ahead and get my single uh, photos done for these for like the actual product photos, for, like per product and stuff. So that's what I'm looking at with that. So where my mind is. I hope this wasn't too long and it made sense. And it's kind of where I'm at with it because I've been editing my labels all day because there is these clear labels. These aren't the actual ones. I can't find my newest label, but something like this. This is like kind of what my label is now. It's clear with brown edges and like a pompous light brown color that goes with my brand and then before when I first was thinking about these jars I was trying to do bronze label transfer labels you know so like it's printed on there and then there was clear labels so there was like different options and then the supplier I put a photo of um if I still have it I think I do I just found it because I had to go back on Alibaba and found her conversation and scroll through every single conversation to find that vendor where they sent me that photo. And basically that photo is of a textured label with bronze foiling. And it's so pretty. And so I'm thinking like, do I want to keep these labels or do I want to do the texture label? Because I feel like this is kind of really close to Yankee. Um, and also that texture would just make it different. And on there, honestly, it was actually like 100 labels for like $30. So it wasn't actually that bad. And for 200 labels, $30 times two plus like whatever it was for shipping, it was around a hundred dollars. So it was like it was a dollar per label, but realistically it's 200 labels. So it wasn't that bad, but I'm trying to see, I forgot, was it for the textured label? Cause they sent me that picture as an example. So I'm trying to see, am I confused on the wet price that was set for? Was that set for the textured label? The vinyl transfers or clear labels? I'm not exactly sure, I don't remember cause that was in 2022. But I'm gonna see about that. But I'm thinking that I don't want to rush it too because I already have these brand new labels here. I already have these labels here, so I'm like, they need to get used up. And also, the thing is, I still can't use them anyway. I would have to use all of these up using my paraffin wax. But I can't. I guess I can keep them on the back burner or like keep them in the back just in case 
the form of God, being able to form a workout or keep um, doing these in paraffin and do these in uh, 6006. Because at least I don't know that the recipe works. I could do a double wick uh, jar in the first place and that my fragrances will transfer over and do well within a 6006 uh, candle. So with a 6006 wax and whatever wicks I use. And I can still get these used up out the way because this is for my paraffin wax and just use paraffin wax for these. So that's what I'm thinking. I think that makes sense. Yeah, that's where my mind is with that. Uh, so we're moving forward. So I, I guess I won't be doing product photography right now. I'll just be doing like having my person on fiber who made my last product photos, have them in my banner. So it's probably what it's just going to be then. This is what I don't understand. So I just bought online the 730s, but I guess I just wasted my time and money because last time when I burnt these, they were too hot, so I extinguished them. But this time I said, you know what? These are hot. I wanna see if they're gonna continue to actually burn hot and just burn frequently. And they still do the same thing. They just haven't extinguished, but they do the same thing. It's been two hours going on three. Um, my time just went off for the first hour. So it's probably like an hour and 10, 30 minutes so far. But we got a little hang up on the side. It's not too bad, but the flames are very, very weak. They haven't extinguished the other ones, but the flames are extremely weak. And it's crazy. I see the air bubble. That, that is crazy. But yeah. So I guess a little bit on that side because this side, there's a lot more wax. So it was burning hot and really fast at first to where you get like two big circles around the wicks. But then it just gets to like this. So they haven't extinguished. So I... I I don't know, maybe I need to go up because these are 735s and last time these were hot, but I guess I didn't let them burn on the way through because they end up doing the exact same thing that everything else does. It just doesn't extinguish itself, so. Okay, so I just realized, I think that 735, even though it's not exactly it, I think it was close to perfect. So I'm just not realizing that. If I wouldn't have blown that one out last year when I was testing this one, because I originally thought it was too hot because of two circles, as soon as I lit it, it was getting pools around them fast. So I blew it out because I thought it was going to get it hot. And then, so y'all know, like, it gets a little less oxygen the further down it burns. I'm gonna show y'all what it looks like. So honestly, the flames have gotten better. They still are low, but they have gotten better from the lotus that they were at. And I'm thinking that if I had fresh wick with fresh top wax, cause this is like middle of the candle with fresh cut wicks, I think it would have performed a little bit differently, but I don't know. But regardless, it stayed lit cause I extinguished it around eight something yesterday that I showed y'all last night. So I came in here and reburnt it because of one thing, I smell it through the house. Now, I still have a little bit of a ring on the side. It's, it's a decent size ring, but on one side, which is where the flames are like mostly pushing towards the other side of the jar, that's mostly already like melted. So I got it burning over here and this is how much wax we got left, but I just started burning this around like an hour ago and this is how much wax we got over here. These are how tall the flames are. And then that's how much we got wax over there, which is still a little bit of hang left, but not that much. Um, and one of the recipes that I had found on Instagram, anyway, I remember someone saying 735 to 745, but their main was a 745. And depending on the fragrance, so they go to a 735 or 740. So I just put two 740s in here, in which a lot of these are already pre-used wicks. So I just put on some wick tabs. And I put them on with this right here, even though one ended up actually coming off. Even though one did actually end up coming off inside of the wax when I was trying to um, put this on, it came up from the bottom. But for the most part, the wick stickers and the wicks actually stay down there when I put them in there, even with all this wax. Just cut me out a good little bit of here with the wax. I put it in here so I could remelt it with this. And I used this to scoop out the wax to put in here and melt here. Put uh, these in with my double wicking tool over here so I can have the right placements because I want to be as close as it is going to be when I actually sell them. So 
these I tried to use this as a guide, but I think I did put them a little close together, but I'm not exactly sure. Uh, so these seem to be a little bit further apart because I actually ended up, as you can see the wax residue, I actually ended up pushing uh, the wig tabs all the way down in there. So these are two 740s right here. So we're going to see how these do in a second. But yeah, so I would have had these jars wicked if I just would have kept going with them because I don't know, like the flames do seem weak, but they're not extinguishing. And also with them being a little on the weaker side, the jar obviously isn't getting too hot, which is a good thing. Now at the top of the jar, like using a 745 like that girl suggested, I don't know how that's going to fare at the top. This uh, flame is bigger than the other. There are no mushrooms. And yeah, it's not getting too hot. Of course, one side of the jar is going to be hotter because the flames are moving in another direction. That's where a majority of the wax is like melting, of course. This is just, I don't know. At this point, I do want to switch to 6006, but in order just to keep it simple so I don't have to do all that testing and changing around stuff when I just found a recipe and possibly found a recipe for my original paraffin wax, I may just stick with this wax. But my thing is, I don't want to stick with this wax, you know, with the supplier and price of it especially and also when I start adding more fragrances and more fragrances I add on a soy blended wax then or just a different wax in general who's to say and different wigs and stuff like that which I have coming in I just bought those wigs yesterday um with this with the money from the sales that I made on those LX wigs and those brown bronze tins I got some CD wigs and some eco wigs coming in and then I have a premier 730 coming in because those are the only ones I did not have in my collection I think I have up to 755 in my Premier Wick collection because that's pretty much all I needed to try to wick these single wick jars and, and whatnot. But yeah, so I have some 730s coming in because I originally thought the 735s were too hot. But when I kept them burning yesterday, I said, ooh, maybe I did go a little too quickly and get those 730s because they're not going to work. But at least I get them, put them in my collection. I don't know. Probably wouldn't necessarily need them, but... At least I have them, I guess, because they were always out of stock on Black Top Barn's website. And I tried to go back and get my money back. It wasn't ever like $9, but that adds up, especially with if I just got two sales. But I'm grateful because I got two sales within the first two weeks or first week of January. So that's really good. So we're on a good track. But yeah, so now I got to do these business taxes with, because I was talking to somebody who I work with. She has multiple businesses and has been doing her taxes with her, um, regular income like from jobs and then also her business income um and which i'm sure she has made a lot more than me because i'm just now starting she's been in business for like three years i believe so she said as a mandatory like even i know there's what's it called i know there's state and other tax self-employment tax and she was like oh there's a minimum self-employment tax for six hundred dollars i'm like and I'm like, because I, I know you're supposed to put back 30% of everything. But in my eyes, I was like, I'm just not starting. Of course, I'm going to have to do a loss form because of my expenses. I'm going to see about how I can write off my YouTube stuff. I know I can write off my candle business stuff. And some of my stuff for, like, you know, regular employment, like car maintenance and uniforms and stuff like that and gas mileage. But I don't know exactly what I can write off with YouTube. I, you know, and I'm, and I'm from, like, a small town. And I don't know, I don't know if people know what else you could write out with social media and stuff like that. So I don't even want to play with it. But I also need to see too because I spent damn near a thousand five hundred on stuff alone on YouTube. Even though of course I was gonna get it anyway, but I'm like, you know what, it's show it on YouTube and be able to write something else. So I don't I don't know. Cause a lot of it is like, oh you can write it off if you show it because that's a part of your business for YouTube. And then some people were like, oh you can't write it off because even though you did it on YouTube you're still gonna use it outside of YouTube so I don't know it's just and she was like if you're per if your person if your tax preparer is willing to go to back for you just in case you get out of it and I'm like I don't even want to have to deal with all of that I don't know I asked the question but <sighs> so yeah there's that but it also smells really good I smell it from all the way in here all over in my room Getting more promising than it was so if I just would have kept with this like last year we probably would have had this recipe by now with this type of wax because I'm using different wigs than what they recommended. And also, what could prevent that too, which is why I got a CD and Eco wigs that I want to use for my 6006 candle recipe. I can use them in this wax too and just see because those wigs are typically on the hotter side. I should be able to still get my recipe off and have a hot wig to where it will keep a flame. this one out, lit this one, 
And this is how the pool is looking over there. Like it was like really, I won't say really wide, but it was wider than usual with the pool. So I I the and also there's a bit of like smoking, but that's probably just because this is like tighter. This is three inches right here.